welcome. I used to call this segment All Things Mac, but now I call it Mac Related Things because I was able to get the email on Gmail, MacRelatedThings at gmail.com. How to downgrade from Catalina to Mojave or some other version of Mac OS. This is the version that requires you to have an external USB device like a USB stick or an external hard drive or even better an external solid state drive this is the sandisk extreme portable ssd one terabyte which i'll use in the uh, example i'm going to do for you i also like this uh, samsung portable ssd the t5 and of course the hard drive i just got a cable on amazon so i can just plug this right into my 2018 MacBook Pro that I've got here. All right, so you need one of these devices, at least one. And you need something big enough to back up your data to, and hopefully your applications as well. So we're going to show you the entire process from backup to restoration. All right. Next thing we need is to, is to get into your iCloud, which is under System Preferences, Apple ID and turn off Find My Mac. So Find My Mac is this uh, thing here. And if it's on, your Apple ID is locked to this hardware and it's gonna ask us for your password and so on when we go to turn this off, right? So we'll have to enter the password. And we should go to uh, Overview and we'll zoom a bit out more there we go sign out of iCloud and we have a choice of cancel or keep a copy so I'll say keep a copy and once you're signed out of iCloud that job is done next if you have a fingerprint sensor you want to go into touch ID and delete your fingerprint uh, why well uh, if you don't delete your fingerprint and you wipe your Mac, uh, it's using up one of five spaces for fingerprints in your T2 security chip. And when you hit the sixth one, you're going to get an error message, fingerprint limit reached, which can be a pain to get around. So it's better to delete your fingerprint. And then when you restore, say, Mojave or High Sierra, you can add your fingerprint again. Okay, so those are the uh, quick and dirty things. Next thing we need to do is get into Time Machine. Uh, I'm going to remove my old backup here. And this is how it would appear as I come in here. If I click Options, there's really nothing in here. So these are the defaults. Okay, so uh, before we do our time machine backup, we need to plug in an external drive. Now I happen to have a uh, SanDisk uh, external portable one terabyte solid state drive, which will make a nice fast backup, relatively speaking. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to give you the worst case here. It is already formatted for Windows, which doesn't do us any good. So we're going to go to, to Finder's Go menu. So this is the Finder Go Utilities, which is also you could do Shift-Command-U. And we want to run Disk Utility. And if you haven't already done so, I have. Click on the View button and go Show All Devices. So you can see here in Disk Utility that we have two sections, internal drives and external drives. And if we click on the external mechanism name, you can see it's partitioned as master boot record. And if we click on the volume, it's an XFAT volume. Well, neither of those will do. We have to click on the mechanism name, click erase. And we do want Mac OS extended journaled, but we don't want master boot record. Now you might think it says Apple and we should use that, but that's for old PowerPC Macs we don't have anymore. 
So it's GUID, Mac OS Extended Journal. Please don't use any of these other weird things, case sensitive. It must be Mac OS Extended Journal. No, it cannot be APFS, not for Time Machine, not yet. Maybe one day, but right now Time Machine does not support APFS. So we're just going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Disk Extreme. Whoops. 1TB. No special characters other than the spaces. So don't put anything weird in. No punctuation. Spaces, underscores, dashes are fine, but nothing other than that. And start with a alphanumeric. An alpha, I would say. Can be letters and numbers but start with a to z once you're there click erase it's going to format the drive and I'll click done see still says master boot record we have to click away and then click back and see yet yeah, now it's guid now the volume is mac os extended journal now it is a valid uh, destination for time machine now, if I hadn't already turned off the default prompts, Time Machine would be asking, hey, would you like to use this as a, as a backup? And you could just say yes. But, um, and then it would start this. It would go, okay, it would select this automatically because you said yes. And then this would be on and it would start a countdown to the next backup. So turn that off, show Time Machine in menu bar. And then up here in the menu bar, you see Time Machine's menu here. You click there and go back up now. And it says, oh, you know, it's not encrypted. Um, sure you wouldn't like to encrypt it? No, I do not want to encrypt my backups. If I drop dead, I want my family to be able to get my backups without having to try and find some obscure password. Yeah, you know, if encryption is important to you, you might consider encrypting it. But for what we're going to do later, I don't think it's a good idea. So later on, I'm going to propose using this exact drive as our installer. And to do that, we're going to add a small partition, even after we have the Time Machine data on here. So this is probably going to take a couple of hours because this is actually my working laptop and it does have uh, 263 gigs of data if you count the applications and it is backing up the apps. You know, in the past I've advocated going into options and excluding applications and so forth, but I've rethought that um, in light of all the user comments. You know, perhaps for the novice user, it's a good idea to have apps backed up. And it can be fairly seamless when you have everything backed up. Oh, before I forget, I should mention, if you're doing a time machine backup and it's going to be the last backup before you erase your machine, which is what we're trying to do here, please don't have applications open with unsaved data. I mean, it may seem like an obvious thing, but uh, so many users I've talked to just seem to have no idea. Oh, they have 14 apps open and five of them have unsaved documents that are they're in the middle of typing. And they think that they're going to get backed up. No, if they're not saved to the disk, they won't be backed up. So save everything, quit out of everything, run absolutely nothing but Time Machine. Uh, if you really want to, you could use your web browser. But don't be opening things in Excel and other apps and creating documents while the backup is happening because you run the risk of losing all that data. This may seem obvious, but uh, you know, I thought I would mention it because you know, users often think, oh, you know, it, it works in the background. I can continue to do my work. Uh, that's true. But if you continue to do your work and you erase the machine before doing yet another time machine backup, what we call an incremental backup, you're definitely going to lose something. So please don't run anything other than, say, a web browser if you have to. 
That way you know everything's going to be backed up. It's going to be on that time machine backup. And, you know, given the amount of uh, data you may have here, I recommend having two backups, not just one. Because what if the drive we're using should decide to fail on this day of all days after we erase your computer? That would be bad. <laughs> so redundancy in backup is always a good thing. Okay, you can see our backup is complete. There's a notification here. If we close this, and if we go look at the backup, there it is. You can see that it's split into three uh, folders. Macintosh HD, which contains the system. Macintosh HD-data, which contains everything else. And inside users is our account. And you can see our uh, data is all in there. Uh, I think I would like to go into Disk Utility. So I'm going to go Shift-Command-U for Utilities. And double-click on Disk Utility. And you can see Disk Utility is here. And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it better. I've already done View Show All Devices. So I can see the device. So there is the mechanism name. And I'm going to click Partition. And we're going to add a partition here by hitting the plus sign. And by default, it's going to use 500 gigs, half of the one terabyte, um, because it's offering this much. But we only need 12, according to Apple, and I'm going to do 16. And I'm going to give it a specific name, and I want you to name yours exactly the same. So call it My Volume, with a capital M and a capital V, no space. Make sure it's 16 gigabytes. It still has to be Mac OS extended journaled. Click apply. And it's going to add a partition and it's going to resize the existing partition, which contains our backup. Now we could have done this easier before we started the backup, but um, I wanted to show you how to do it after without moving your data. Getting rid of all that data, putting it somewhere else can be challenging, all right? So there it is, it is done. We zoom out here, we can see, I'm gonna quit Disk Utility. There we have this My Volume. Now why do we see that? Because I have my Finder Preferences set to show external hard drives. So whether I have them set to show them or not, it's still there. So if you did a new Finder window, you would still see it in the sidebar here so the next step is to download the OS that we want. We want Mojave. So um, if we do a web search, and the web search is upgrade to Mojave, or it could be upgrade to High Sierra, whichever one you want. Look for the Apple uh, support.apple.com article how to upgrade to Mac OS Mojave. Click on that link. And uh, I've zoomed in too far. You don't want to read the article. Just scroll down to step four where it says download. And you'll see here, if you still want Mojave and not Catalina, there is a link. If we click on this link, and I'm going to put it in the video description so you don't have to do the search, but I feel it's important you know how to find it uh, if need be, right? Click on the link, it opens the App Store, and there's a button that says Get, and we can click on it, and hopefully it will download. If it doesn't download, for whatever reason, there's an alternate method to do this using the terminal, and again, the terminal command is in the description for this video, but if you want to find it, let's do a web search on software where update, all one word, 
dash dash full. And the first article we see here, scripting OS 10.com, it's Roman numeral, looks like OS X.com is the one we want. And unfortunately, the article is a little confusing for newbies because the command here is sitting here with a prompt character. See that percent character? That's not part of the command. The percent and the space, that's your command prompt. What you would type is everything after. All right, so if I select that, right click, copy. And I'm going to hide Safari because I'm going to need it again. Hide Safari. There we go. Command H is a shortcut. And we want to launch Terminal. Now I have Terminal down here in my dock, but most of you won't have it. How to get there? Click on your Spotlight icon and start typing Terminal. T-E. Come on. T-E-R-M. And there it is. Hit Return. It launches. So this is Terminal's basic window and what it looks like. I'm going to go Shift Command Plus, make it a little bigger, and I'm going to drag it out. And we're going to paste in the command, but we're not going to hit Return just yet. So I want to talk to you about this before we do. So you can see the command does not include the percent sign. If you included the percent sign, you're going to get an error that says something like uh, job not found because percent in the shell means drop this into the background as a job. This command will only work inside Catalina in the terminal and it will only work for two versions of Mac OS that I can determine 10.14.6 and 10.13.6. Furthermore, on some computers, if you try to download 10.13.6, it won't work. Usually on computers that don't support High Sierra. All right. So, you know, I could just backspace and go 10.13.6 and it would probably work. But this is a 2018 MacBook Pro and I know for a fact I cannot install High Sierra from an external USB on this computer. It just doesn't work. Even though it should work, it doesn't work. But I can install Mojave from an external. So that's what I'm going to download. And like I said, if the App Store link works for you, you don't need Terminal for this, right? And since the last time I made a recording of this, uh, we're getting some interesting little error messages. SU Preference Manager failed to set object of class, blah, 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 blah. Just ignore that stuff. I don't believe it's important. Now, the last time I recorded this video, this command failed the first time and I had to hit the up arrow to recall the last command and try again. So this will take some time because it's downloading. Now, this particular Mac, I've plugged it into Ethernet, so it should be faster than Wi-Fi and slightly more reliable. So if you're getting errors, downloading a big file, and this is a big file, it's about six gigabytes. Uh, try to get onto Ethernet if that's an option for your hardware. Uh, if it's not an option, just keep trying until you get an uncorrupted copy. And the problem is you can't always know it's uncorrupted, even if it thinks it's uncorrupted. There is a chance it could be corrupted and you find out later in the process. So if something goes wrong later, ask yourself, could my download have been corrupted? Maybe I should delete it and start again. Where is it going to put this? It's going to put this in the Applications folder. As you can see this time, our install finished successfully. I'm going to Hide Terminal by going to Terminal's menu and selecting Hide Terminal. Or I could have done the shortcut Command H. And I'm going to go Shift, Command A, go to the Apps folder, hit the letter I, and there it is. Install Mac OS Mojave. Now, sometimes when you download this, it'll automatically launch and give you this error. All right. This copy of Install Mac OS app is too old to be open on this version of Mac OS. Well, yes, 
inside Catalina, this isn't going to work. Why would you expect it to? So uh, you click quit, but we're going to use this file. See, it's 6.05 gigabytes. It's an app file, and it's right where we need it to be in the apps folder. But we're going to find a terminal command to create a startup disk out of this my volume. And to do that, I go back to Safari and go uh, create Mac. I can't type Mac OS bootable USB. And I want to see this support article from Apple, support.apple.com, how to create a bootable installer. Once again, I don't want to read the article. You can see the URL contains en-ca, which means English Canada. <clears throat> if you're in the US, it would be en-us. Other countries would have other codes. But this part of it here, HT201372, will be the same. Okay, so uh, we don't need to read it, just scroll down. Under this Create Install Media headline, find the OS you're installing. So it would be Mojave, High Sierra, or perhaps El Capitan. Copy the command. So right click, copy. And then we go back to the terminal. I'm going to zoom out here. Command tab to switch back to terminal. Command tab again. Let go. Paste the command into terminal. All right. So you can see again, we have our prompt, which ends in the dollar sign space. And then our command, super user do. So that's what s sudo means. So do this command as the root, the all powerful user in Unix. Remember that uh, Mac OS is uh, OS 10. Now we call it Mac OS is based on Berkeley Unix. And it's calling a command inside that thing we downloaded, the Mojave app, installer app. So it's inside contents, resources. It's called create install media. It has a parameter here, dash dash volume. It's specifying the target volume, which is this one here. So we hit return. And here's another confusing thing for the newbie. The terminal is asking for a password. Well, what password is this, first of all, that it's asking for? Well, we're logged in with this account, admin. So that's the password that it wants. Assuming admin is really an admin. You know, it could say your name here, for example. So you would just put in your account password. Mine is APPLE. Notice as I type, nothing happens, right? Until I press return. It says ready to start. To continue, we need to erase the volume. Press Y to continue. Shift Y. Boom. And away it goes. Now we get a message. Terminal would like to access files on a removable volume. OK or don't allow. Well, obviously, you have to click OK or you're going to stop this thing in its tracks. All right. So now it's going to do its thing, you can see it's already renamed my volume to install macOS Mojave. And when it's done, we'll be ready. Now, see how fast that was. That took it like 30 seconds. Now, this will not take 30 seconds on an external USB stick. External solid state drive, yes. External USB, this may take, you know, five, 10 minutes, I would say. If it takes too much longer than 10 minutes, then maybe your external device is too slow uh, and it's time to find something a little faster. But uh, don't give up. Give it some time to finish. Once it's finished, now we have, uh, we can command Q out of terminal, command Q out of Safari. Everything is backed up. We're rapidly approaching the point of no return here. You do not want to cross the point of no return without a good backup. So what is the next step? The next step 
um, if you have a T2 chip, is to turn off some startup security. So how do you know if you have a T2? Well, if you have the fingerprint sensor, you have the T2. If you go Apple menu about this Mac, and then uh, you click system report, and on the sidebar here, you go to controller. If you have a T2, you'll see it here, Apple T2 security chip. If you don't, you won't see that. All right, so if you don't have a T2 chip, shut down your computer and we'll catch up with you in a few minutes. If you do, restart your computer holding Command-R. Now, you don't want to press the keys down until the screen goes black. So I'll show you how to do that. Restart, waiting for the screen to go black. My hand is poised over the keyboard to hold the left-hand command and R. Now I'm holding them down, Command R. Keep holding it until you see the progress bar, not just the Apple logo. Wait for the progress bar, that line that will appear below the logo and a little to the left. There it is, now I can let go. So we've told the machine by holding those keys, we want to boot to the hidden recovery partition on your Mac. Now it's possible you don't have a recovery partition. Why would that be? If somebody set up your machine in a strange way, who didn't really know how to set up the Mac, maybe they copied another machine, uh, the recovery partition might be missing, in which case it'll prompt you to select uh, a Wi-Fi network if you're on Wi-Fi, or it'll just automatically go and boot from Apple's internet servers, and you might see the little globe of the earth spinning. Anyway, after several seconds, we should be in recovery mode and you'll have a Mac OS utilities menu. And we're going to deal with our startup security problem. Oh, look, it's asking us, do we speak English? Yes. So pick the language of your choice, hit return. Here we are, Mac OS recovery. Mac OS Utilities, ignore this for the moment, come up to the menu, select Utilities, Startup Security Utility. It says authentication needed. You will need to authenticate as an administrator to change the boot security settings. Enter Mac OS password. So what password is it asking for? Well, you can see here, I only have the one account, admin, on this computer. It's asking for the password for admin, which in my case right now is temporarily Apple in lowercase. So I'm gonna type that in. It lets me in. So now we're in the startup security utility. First thing we wanna do is allow booting from external or removable media. Second thing we wanna do is to turn secure boot off. Now they say that medium security should work for any signed version of Mac OS, but in my experience, it doesn't work. So you can try it if you want, but I select no security. In this section here, it's saying firmware password protection is off and we wanna keep it off. So what is firmware password protection? Well, you can password protect the machine so nobody can get in and make changes. And uh, normally an institution like a college or a university would make changes like that or perhaps a business. But generally speaking, you do not want to have a firmware password because if you forget it, it's a big rigmarole to get that sorted. You'd have to go to an authorized service provider and provide proof of purchase for the hardware. It can take a couple of days. So... Again, if you don't have a T2 chip, you won't have to worry about any of this. Once you've made the settings, close Startup Security Utility, go to the Apple menu and select Shutdown. We can't just restart, apparently. We must shut down for these changes to take effect. Now we're gonna hold the left-hand Option key down and power on the machine with the Option key down. Keep holding Option until you see the graphical startup manager. 
There it is. I'm going to hit the right arrow to select install macOS Mojave. And I'm going to hit return. And now we're booting from our external installer. So again, this will take a few seconds. Depends on the speed of your external device, the speed of your hardware. And this is assuming, of course, your startup security settings worked. If you get a circle with a slash through it, that's your T2 chip telling you, hey, this is not a valid boot device. So either you didn't set the settings correctly, or perhaps you have a machine that's too new. It only supports Catalina. It's up to you to figure that out. Any Mac released in the year 2020 requires Catalina, will not support Mojave. And two Macs released in 2019 also require Catalina. The new Mac Pro uh, and the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. Both of those machines are Catalina only, I'm afraid. So you can complain to Apple if you want about that, but it's unlikely they're going to update Mojave to support the new hardware. And why should they? It's a lot of work, right? Continue with English, and we have a very similar menu. Now, the difference here is we're going to run Disk Utility, and we're going to erase our device. Now, be very, very careful with Disk Utility. Uh, you, you must click the View menu, go Show All Devices, and what we're going to erase here is in the Internal section, okay? We're not going to touch anything external, right? So, for example, I could here accidentally erase my backup. That would be bad. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Instead, you click on the mechanism name. Hopefully, it's a solid state drive. If it's a fusion drive, stop here, watch my video on how to reset a fusion drive, and come back afterward. So, we click, again, this is the point of no return. Once we erase this, we have completely erased all of our apps, all of our data, and we're going to need the backup to restore them. Please accept the defaults when you click Erase. So for this hardware, 2018 MacBook Pro, it knows it only supports APFS to boot from uh, internally. Okay, so it's already set this to APFS. If you have an older Mac, it'll come up Mac OS Extended Journal. But when I try to select that, it says, uh, you know, you have to have APFS, right? So now give your drive a name. You can go with tradition and call it Macintosh space HD. And the partition map must be GUID. So whatever the format default was, just accept it. Do not change it. Click Erase. And say goodbye to all of our apps and all of our data. <laughs> Hopefully you have a good backup. Well, that didn't take too long. Close Disk Utility, and then the next thing we need to do is double-click Install Mac OS. Now, this is Mojave. Of course, you might be installing High Sierra or El Capitan. If you're installing El Capitan, you probably need to watch my video on that because there's a date problem. So I'm selecting the target drive, Macintosh HD, and I'm clicking Install. And I'm going to shut the camera off until this is done. Our install is complete. First step, choose a country. Choose a keyboard layout. And Apple respects our data and privacy. Thank you, Apple. And this is the screen where we can... Oh, let's make this a little brighter here. There you go. Restore from a time machine backup. Okay. Click Continue. Now it's looking for a time machine backup. There it is. Click Continue. Yes. Continue. And we just accept the defaults. Restore everything.
It takes a while to prepare the source. I was quite impressed uh, with Time Machine restoring from backup that I made on um, Mojave. Now this one's purely made on Catalina, so we'll see if we have any more issues because of that. So we're going to restore everything, click continue. We have to promote our account to admin and put in a new password or the same, obviously. I'm just going to put the same one in. And set password and continue. And off it goes to start transferring items. So this will take some time. Okay, you can see it says migration complete. I'm going to quit. And then we have a login. We can put in our password. And Apple setup appears, and we could sign into iCloud and stuff, but I'm going to say setup later. Skip. And we can do our Touch ID, rapidly put our finger down, Touch ID is ready, setting up your Mac, we are done. Okay. Open security preferences. Some system extension got blocked. So we gotta unlock it, put in the password, and click allow. Then we gotta do the same thing for this one, but it has disappeared. So I don't know how you're supposed to handle multiple extensions asking for something at the same time. And you can see our version of Safari doesn't work. We also have some question marks for apps that no longer exist. We're going to drag them into the sky and remove them. <clears throat> so how to fix the Safari problem? Well, we need to reinstall Mac OS and we have an installer right here. So we're just going to go Apple menu restart. Hold the option key down. Going to start from our external USB installer. I know it's tedious, but it's a nice, easy way to get Safari back. We call it a dirty install because we're not going to erase anything first because that would undo all of our work restoring our apps and data, right? Install Mac OS, continue. And we're going to run the installer, continue, agree, agree, select the drive, install. Notice we did not erase anything. And now we have the tedious wait for this to finish. So I'm going to turn the camera off. So we've reinstalled the OS. And we're going to log in again and see if our Safari problem has gone away. And here's another security preferences prompt. I need to unlock. And allow. And allow these other things too. There we go. Okay. And we're going to launch Safari, even though the icon is wrong, and see it fixes itself. And Safari is now working. So um, you may have some issues with Apple Mail. It'll want to import the old messages. So Mail wants to import some messages. I'm going to click Continue. And hopefully this will just work. I'm just going to Command H to hide. Okay, so let's try launching the Photos app and see what happens. Photos launches, an unexpected error has occurred. 
All right, so if we go to the Go menu and go Home, we go to our Pictures folder, and we can see our Photos Library. Now let's right-click on it and go Show Package Contents. And here we have an Originals folder. So let's drag that out to the desktop. I'm going to hit the back arrow. And then we're just going to Command, Delete, and move that to the trash. Now we're going to launch Photos again. This time there'll be no photos in there. But hopefully no error either. And then we can say Import and Desktop Originals Go. There's all my photos. I only had a small amount in here just for demo purposes. And I'll say Import. And there they are. All right. So now that they're imported, we can now delete the Originals folder, launch Photos again, and they're still there. You can still get into the photos, right? So uh, you have to have the disk space for this, of course, or you might have to uh, delete the Photos library from your internal drive and do the drag and drop on your external from your backup. So uh, let me just demo that quickly. So home directory, pictures, I'm going to delete the photos library again. And I'm going to empty the trash. And um, I'm going to go to the backup into my latest backup and users and there's my account there's my pictures and right click on photos show package contents now let's drag originals to the top of the backup drive saying hey you got to authenticate so uh, i'm going to either type my password or put my finger down and then it works so now uh, if we look on the top of the drive, Originals is there. So again, we launch Photos. And we're going to say Open Other and Create a New Library in Pictures. And File, Import, Navigate to the External, uh, Originals. Review for import and import all new. And voila. So that's how you get your photos back. In a similar vein to photos, uh, if we go to our home directory into music, uh, we've got these two folders, iTunes and music. We should drop them on the desktop. All right. Drop on desktop. Now when we launch uh, iTunes for the first time, I don't actually have it in my dock, which is interesting because I don't really use it that much. Where are you, iTunes? I missed you here. I'm sure you're on this first page. There you are. So we go iTunes, agree, and I'm not going to log in just yet. Not yet. Agree. And we go cancel. File, add to library. Again, navigate to the desktop. Let's see what's in the music folder. Nothing we need. So it's the iTunes folder, iTunes media. There's all my music. And I say import. Right? And away it goes. And then I just have to do the same for movies. So I go file. Add to library, navigate up a level to iTunes Media, and there's movies, and open. And that'll be queued up, and we'll have everything that we need. And then you can sign into your, you know, if you use Apple Music and all of that, or not, as the case may be. But that's how you get your data back into iTunes. Again, if you have a disk space problem, 
do this from your backup to the top level of the backup drive and then import from there. And of course, once you're done, delete those folders from your desktop because you don't need them anymore. The import actually does copy the file into the iTunes library in your home directory. So that's all there is to know. It's been a long ride, uh, if you're still watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Fade out.